Bonna family, Mike Lindsley back with you for an ML Sports Take. It's all brought to you by Camillus Golf Club and Welch and Company Jewelers. Bonnie's fall, 86-75 to 75 at George Washington, and I tried to wake up this morning to show you my surprised face, but this is why a month and a half ago or so, maybe even more, I told you I was checking out and I wasn't emotionally invested in this group anymore. And last night, they showed that they clearly weren't either. This group lost for a few reasons last night. The first of which was very, very, very simple. They did not close out on the three-point shot the entire game. The first part of the game, right from the beginning and right to the end, they did not close out on three-point shots. It didn't matter if it was out on the wings. It was very rare where there was a major contested shot. And then in some cases, George Washington still made it. But to let them shoot 29 of them, just by a numbers game, you're going to make... I would say probably six or seven at the Division One level, at least, whether they're challenged or not. Let's say that's a minimum. You know, you get into that world, maybe you make eight, eight for 29. You know, you do the quick math there and you're, you know, you're right around that, you know, 25 to 31, 32 percent, um, you know, give or take one less, one more. They made 15 of them. I mean, they shot 51.7% from three, so too many attempts, and then, you know, they made the 15 of them, so that, to me, was right there, the, the A number one problem. I mean, you give up 45, three, uh, 45 points to three-pointers, you're going nowhere in college basketball, and, and most of these teams practice three-pointers more than they practice free throws, practice layups, practice basics. That's the Steph Curry world that we live in, and we have lived in that world for a while. So when you give up 45 points to threes, <clears throat> you might as well pack your bags from the beginning. Another thing was Bishop the Fourth. you knew he was their guy right going into it, and there were no adjustments made to him from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. And that's a Mark Schmidt problem. That's a coaching problem for sure. Uh, 27 points, uh, you know, to the guy who, if you stop him, if you remotely control him, you might win the game. Now they did give up Edwards, uh, uh, seven, uh, 19, excuse me, to Edwards off the bench, which was a surprise as well. Um, which brings me to the second thing. I thought in the first half, Bonaventure overall, effort was there, balanced scoring was there, the defense was not there. But Effort, energy, balance, scoring, and, and, and I like the way that they were attacking offensively. Um, I actually think Bonaventure should do more of the mid-range game because they have quick, you know, pull-and-pop type guards who can stop and pop and go up. Even, you know, Banks has that style. For example, Flowers for sure has that style. Pride has that style, and Adams Woods can do it too. You know, dribble up, dribble, make your move, boom, stop, pop, you know, maybe even a leaner and shoot right over somebody. Also, Ascendus can do it and Evans can do it. Those guys can shoot over people because they're long, lean, and they can get up over the top. Now, the problem is Barry Evans isn't really a scorer, and if he stays at Bonaventure, they've really got to figure out a way to get him more uh, to be more of an offensive player because you can't have him playing 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, whatever minute total he's playing and put up a donut or put up, you know, four. Uh, while the guy goes in and gets usually a bunch of rebounds and all the rest, he was a non-factor last night. I just, you know, you, you got to have a little bit more offensively from him. But you can see Asemvis, you know, can do it too, you know, right in, in the mid-range and shoot over people. Um, <clears throat> so I was okay with the first half overall, except for the defense, especially in the offensive, you know, side, the execution. I mean, my God, they scored 42 points. They they were up 42 to 37. It should have been by more, okay? But I like the mid-range game, the attack, moving without the basketball. There were a couple of blip turnovers and all the rest. But the end of the first half kind of changed things from a momentum standpoint. There's no question about it. St. Bonaventure was up 42 to 34 after the Adams Woods free throws, and you're and you're feeling pretty good, right? Well, then all of a sudden, Autry makes a three-pointer. And you kind of thought to yourself right then and there with that defensive possession that God, you know, it should be up eight here. Uh, down five. Let's see. Eh, maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe it is a big deal. Who knows? A little bit of a, mom a momentum switch there. Will George Washington ride it into the second half? Well, sure enough, they did. And the issue I had in the second half, it, it was twofold. One, the coaching was awful. I mean, St. Bonaventure is getting dusted in every way, shape, and form, and they played some zone. I, 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 don't, I don't know why. I mean, you, you weren't closing out on the shooters before, so to mix zone and man... 
it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Why don't you just step up the effort in trying to take out some offensive players, especially Bishop the fourth, who you know is their main guy. I thought that was horrendous. I mean, the, the coaching in this game, not making adjustments in the second half was, I mean, both of those, it, it was just dreadful. Um, the second thing that, that put them in the loser's column in this game, as far as the second half goes, and really the, the list overall, was just the mix of lack of execution, stupid mistakes, and basketball IQ. You know, kind of all roped into that. You know, you want to say basketball mistake and IQ is the same thing, you know, however you want to do it. But I, I should say, I should say basketball IQ, execution, you know, slash decision making. That, that's probably the better way to say it. Because there were several plays where there was just careless basketball um, giveaways, guys, you know, not expecting a pass. The Adams Woods play in the second half where he goes down low and tries to shoot it up over a, 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 a GW player who has three or four inches on him. You, you know that ball's going to get blocked. <laughs> You know, you, I mean, he's already he's already under, and the play is basically toast unless he kicks it out. And he just, ah, I'll just try it. I, I mean, stuff like that you, you can't have in the first week of March. You, you can't do those things. Continuing to dump it into Chad Venning. Idiotic, right? Venning was a no-show in this game. But they went to him here and there. I mean, I would have probably pulled him in the second half at some particular point. I know he had the layup at 1742 to go up four. That's cute. Um, was really a non-factor the entire second half and really the majority of the ball game. Coaching. Um, now he was out for periods and pride was out for periods, which was kind of odd. Um, some recaps have said, well, you know, put Venning back in the game. Um, I disagree. I, I think that the Venning thing, um, uh, it, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to, to figure out what would have been right and all that. But in, in a lot of spots when he was in there, they dumped it to him too much. If you want to say, well, there were times in the second half where he, maybe he should have been in there a little bit more. That's your opinion. Um, I would have liked at all times, a better effort from the forward guards, the quicker players on Bonaventure who are able to get out on the three-point shot um, across the board. The way GW was moving the ball, they were able to do anything they wanted. They could go inside, outside, find a three-point shooter. They could go inside, outside, outside, inside, find a quick layup. Um, you know, and then as the game kept going on, I mean, the Hutchinson three-pointer, that possession was a was a, a perfect example with 14 minutes and change to go where Bishop the fourth assisted him. <clears throat> you know, Bonaventure maybe thinks, well, that Bishop's going to take the shot, haven't neutralized him at all. And that's what happens when you don't defend a guy and he starts going off and starts opening up things for other players. How about the Buchanan layup? Those kind of possessions. That pass was from Bishop as well. So, and then he gets to the line and then George Washington started doing anything that they wanted to. And then by that point, Bonaventure is behind the play. You know, because they didn't adjust enough in the beginning of the second half. And George Washington just kept, you know, being able to do whatever the hell they wanted in this basketball game. Um, you know, and Bishop, by the way, also had six assists. So George Washington had four guys in double figures. They shot 51.7% from three. 45 points of the 86 were from three. They shot 58.7% from the floor overall. And they out-rebounded Bonnie's by nine. They out-assisted them 19 to 11. Um... And what's amazing is they had 14 turnovers to Bonaventure 7. Um, you know, this was the game where I told everybody a week ago, and by the way, you had a week to prepare, week to prepare for this team, knowing really it was a couple of big concentration things to get you to win the basketball game. One of them is, you know, neutralizing Bishop. I mean, what did they do all week? I have no idea. Um, they were out coached. They were out played. Um, in the second half, they were out. 
I mean, just absolutely outclassed in terms of a competition and effort standpoint, which is mind-boggling considering the night before the absolute <clears throat> favor, the absolute handout that they were given in terms of VCU going down and knowing that if you beat GW and you beat St. Louis and Dayton beats VCU um, in the final game that, you know, you actually sneak into the double buy, which two months ago was absolutely laughable to think about. You know, I, I again, I'm not surprised because this is who they are. Um, but this is why I emotionally uh, checked out a month and a half ago, maybe more. Um, we rode the roller coaster way in the beginning and could kind of see. What's amazing, though, is these shooting numbers for St. Bonnie. 10 to 12 from the free throw line, 11 of 24 from three, and 48.2% from the floor. This reminded me a lot of Syracuse the night before. They scored the same exact amount of points as Syracuse. And the defense was horrendous. Didn't close out. And then in the second half, obviously the offense got a lot worse. St. Bonnie only scored 33 in the second half. They got outscored 49 to 33. But overall, if you score 75 points in 7 out of 10 basketball games in, in the collegiate level, <clears throat> I, I would say if you play <clears throat> relatively, excuse me, solid defense, you're going to win the game. If you score 75 points, you have a pretty good shot. I mean, you know, again, I, I wish I could tell you I'm shocked, but I, I'm not. Um, and, you know, I, I said it in the last video. This is where they crash. They've crashed all year in this spot. Because this is the Bonaventure roller coaster in 23-24. We go up, we feel so good, and then all of a sudden we drop hard. And they dropped hard again. This team had won four or five going in. George Washington's one of the worst teams in the A-10, one of the worst teams in college basketball. They do have a star player. They have athletic players for sure, but everybody's athletic. I mean, there's 362 teams in D1. Everybody's athletic. Everybody's on a D1 scholarship. Everybody's athletic. Um, they have streaky players. They have guys who can take over games, but... Isn't that what you prep for? Isn't that what you watch games for? Isn't that what you watch trends and tendencies for over a week? Or about a week's time? Mm, boy, I'll tell you. But this is what they do, you know? They beat, they go at, at Fordham and beat Davidson in OT, then they lose at LaSalle. They go at UMass, beat Loyola at home. Most impressive win of the year, then they lose at GW. I mean, this is, you know, this is what they do. They go at Dayton, could have easily won that game, almost win it, right? Ranked team. Then they beat UMass at home, then they lose against Duquesne at home. I mean, this is the Sioux there, you know, the Sioux there. They beat VCU on the road, lose to Richmond, lose to Fordham. Come back, beat Rhode Island, lose to Mason, lose to Duquesne. Beat St. Joe's, beat VCU again. At Dayton, could have won that game for three in a row. And then all the other stuff that I talked about to lead us to here. So I'm not surprised, you know, and that's why... I also will not be surprised if they crush St. Louis on Saturday and go make a deep run in the A-10 because that's just who they are. But I will also not be surprised if they beat St. Louis by double figures and then lose the first game of the A-10. You know, we're here now, folks. I mean, this is who they are. The only thing that is going to stun us is if they go and win the A-10 tournament but do it in dominating, consistent fashion. That's the only thing that's left for a wow face. At this point, ML Sports Take, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Brought to you here by Stanley Law Offices and our good friends at Stumbling Monkey Brewing Company. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.